Well, good morning, Lionheart. I have to go downtown for my doctor's appointment, and I had an interesting idea. I decided I'm gonna do multiple live chats today. Much shorter, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But since I'm going to so many different places today, since I'm gonna be downtown, I figured, let's make it a little bit more fun. Let's try and live chat from every one of them. And the reason I'm wearing these sunglasses is because I'm gonna put them on eBay on my Days with Jordan the Lion eBay account and uh, whoever wants them can bid on them and have the sunglasses from today. Actually gonna see quite a few things. One of them is from one of my favorite movies. Um, in like 2002, 2003, when I was first out here, I became obsessed with this movie. I watched it every day or every other day. I haven't done any locations from this movie yet, so this is gonna be a first. But last night I was actually thinking like, what can I vlog downtown while I'm going for my doctor's appointment? And then all of a sudden this popped into my head and I was like, that's downtown somewhere. I should look up the address. And as soon as I looked up the address, I found out that the location was literally a block away from my doctor's office where my appointment is, which is totally weird because uh, the pla like the section of town where my doctor's office is, I never have to go down there. And the entire time that I've lived out here, I've only went down there for this. So I never go down that area. I would have had no reason to go down any other time. So it's perfect that I get to do this vlog today. So hope you guys don't get mad, but we're gonna have multiple live chats today. Days with Jordan the Lion and this Joker begins now. Now either those are some totally insane crazy clouds or they did another one of those sky riding things with an airplane and it's all starting to dissolve away. What do you think? Some of the patterns look a little weird to me. All right, Lionhearts, let's get this day and adventure started. Anything could happen, especially when you're taking the train and you're going downtown, but I have a few ideas of how this will be a great day. And you're going along with me. So let's go ahead and start the first live chat. All right, next stop downtown. Well, some guy just saw me walking around with the camera and asked me if it was a flamethrower, so that's how my day's starting. We have 30 minutes until my doctor's appointment, almost exactly, and I think it takes from here about 15 minutes to walk there. So let's go live again for live cast number two today. And when we uh, finish that one up, we'll be over at our destination for today. Well, I finally made it over here and the quality cafe does not look the same at all anymore. It used to be orange. And it's been used in tons of movies. It was in Seven, it was in Catch Me If You Can, but what I love it for the most is Ghost World. This is the cafe where in the very early part of the movie we see Enid in here sitting at a booth and she's actually um, drawing in her little sketchbook like she always does. And she's watching, she's actually in the second booth in here and then right here in this corner, I'm gonna go inside. It looks like they're open even though it says closed, um, but it looks like they've completely redone the inside. Right here is where the people that she's drawing are sitting and she says, um, when a very young, and I think it might have actually been her very first movie, um, Scarlett Johansson, she was 16 at the time, she walks in, sits with Enid, who's played by Thora Birch, who I had a massive crush on. She uh, comes in, sits down, 
and uh, Enid says, I'm completely convinced these people are Satanists. And then they turn around and look at him sitting here in the corner of this booth. And then uh, while they're in there having their conversation about looking for apartments and everything, then um, we see the Satanists come walking outside with their umbrellas. And we see them standing right out front with their black umbrellas. And then the whole walk starts where the girls start following them all over all over town. So now the Quality Cafe is called the Cafe Terragram. And um, it's right next to the Terragram Ballroom, which is like a music venue out here. You can see. So I'm going to see if I can go in and get any footage at all inside. Right there is where the Satanists would have sat, and they, uh, I just talked to the manager. The manager said they completely renovated this place about four years ago, and it was a two-year process. But Enid and uh, Rebecca would have been sitting right around here. Hi. Check out these people behind you. I'm totally convinced they're Satanists. in like right in the middle and then the Satanist would have been sitting right back there in the corner and now it's the Terragram Cafe but it used to be the Quality Cafe and like I said if you've seen Seven or if you've seen um, uh, what was the other one I was thinking of um, oh Catch Me If You Can those were all filmed inside here and now it's a coffee shop but I love this movie and Enid would have been sitting right about here I'll match up sections from the movie. And then the, uh, the Satanists would have been standing right outside this door and they would have popped open their umbrellas right there. Hey, we should follow them. Oh, we totally have to. Oh my god. <laughs> and then that's pretty much where we just, like I said, we see the girls just go walking off. And if I'm not mistaken, my the place I'm having my doctor's appointment is just a block or two blocks up. That's how close they were. Now what's interesting is that even though, like I told you, all their walking scenes were filmed in like San Pedro and Santa Clarita and, and Hollywood and Rossmore and all that stuff, one of the funny things is about that movie is that they really, um, Terry Zweigoff, the guy who directed it, really wanted to capture like this kind of rundown look to Los Angeles but the cinematographer was so good that everything the guy shot made it look kind of like this 50s kind of like this where it was like these old kind of classic style arches and multicolors and so when it was on screen it really just like came to life and that's one of those things that it's uh it just goes to show you how important a cinematographer or a director of photography is when it comes to making a movie because the way they capture the movie can completely change the way you view the movie. It can give it a completely different feel, a completely different vibe. Alright guys, so we're, uh, we're pretty close to my doctor's appointment. We're like a block away, so I'll fill you guys in on what I find out. Now, as far as I know, what this is all about today is it's just supposed to be them telling me what the results of my tests were, which is what I thought I went to the other doctor for last week, and then they're going to schedule me for my, um, supposedly, they're supposed to schedule me for my surgery, which is in two days. because uh, last time I came for an appointment here, I waited out in the lobby for an hour and a half. I've been waiting for 40 minutes now, so I just asked him how long until they're gonna see me. She said 45 minutes, so that's gonna be another hour and a half, so I'm just leaving. And uh, she told me to come back like in a half an hour or something. I don't know why they even make appointments when it takes them an hour and a half past when my appointment is to even get me in there. Stupid. All right, after I came back, I only had to wait for about five minutes. So now they're going to go over my MRI results, and uh, this is my pre-op appointment. 
Well, it was pretty much exactly like I said. I walked in there, waited for a little while. They pulled me in, they just said, yeah, all your results were okay, and your surgery is scheduled for Friday at 4.30. So, I basically came down here for a big chunk of my morning just for them to tell me something they could have told me over the phone. All right, well, now that we finished all that up, I want to go get something to eat, and I decided earlier on that I'm going to go over to Clifton's Cafeteria since I'm in the neighborhood. The largest cafeteria in the world. Or at least that's what they say. And heck, let's go do our uh, fourth live stream, live chat of the day. Well, we've made it to our destination right on the other side of this obnoxious Star Tours van. There's Clifton's. Let's go in and have a great meal, guys. Can't wait. All right, you guys have been here with me before, so I'm gonna go in and eat, and we'll talk in a little bit. Well, I went ahead and got the chicken pot pie. Actually, I'm going to move seats. I'm going to go up one level. Well, I decided to bring my food up here, and I think I might do a live live stream from inside here, right here where the, uh, the tree is. All right, we're done eating. We're going to get out of here. I was hoping the Tiki Lounge upstairs was open, but it's uh, they have the false mirrored door kind of hiding the entrance to it. So we're just going to go ahead and get out of here. We've already eaten, and... Wow, I love this place. If you're ever in Los Angeles, make sure you come to Clifton's Cafeteria. And uh, don't be scared off by the bear tracks. Ow! Look, that's where they filmed Thriller. Remember Michael Jackson walking out of here for Thriller? Well, something's going on over here. Oh goodness, they must be filming a TV show or something over here. I just overheard somebody say it was Love Connection. They're filming Love Connection there. I guess they brought that back. That's, that's what the world needs is another blind date dating show. Did you guys ever see Phil Hartman when he was on Love Connection? I think that's what he was on. I saw a clip of it, pretty good. By the way, I have fallen down the rabbit hole of watching news radio again. I think I'm watching, I forget what season, season two, I think. And it's this season where Phil Hartman gets a cane. That episode was killing me. It's the Alexandria Hotel up there. That's a good looking sky. Sorry about the audio issues today, guys. I guess my microphone got just bumped enough to be unplugged and we got some weird distortion on my voice. If it's not one thing, it's another with me. And I think I'm actually gonna do one more live stream tonight.